Welcome to Make the Grade with the success doctor, Stephen Green, where you'll discover actionable strategies to help your student to reach their academic goals, to excel at standardized testing, and to plan for the college admissions process painlessly. And now, here's your host, Dr. Stephen Green. Hey everyone, Steve Green, the Make the Grade podcast. We are back. Yeah, let's get the theme song going here. A little, there, oh, there it is. Yeah, everybody's favorite song. So uh, what's going on today? What is going on with you? Hope you're having a good May. It is the middle of May here in Philadelphia. And uh, I have an interesting guest today. Very interesting guest. I got to tell you something. I grew up in the 70s and 80s. And uh, folks, it, this may be shocking. There were no phones, cell phones. There weren't even computers. There weren't tablets. There was no internet. There was no computer programming in the way that's going on now. In fact, my father, tell you an interesting story, was a Fortran programmer. Fortran. Does that even exist anymore? My guest, Vash, Yash. So Fortran, my father was in the cutting edge of programming computers. It was called Fortran. I'm not even sure what that means. <laughs> Maybe somebody can explain it to me. But here's what we're going to talk about. The Make the Grade podcast and what I do, my live streams, it's all about actions. I want you to be able to listen to this and go do something that's going to help you to maximize your education. My guest today, all the way from India, the great country of India, halfway around the world. It's like eight in the morning here and it's like 10 at night there. I don't even know. Uh, is Yash Singh. He's a STEM educator. He has worked with over 500 middle school and high school kids in Texas. Now he's a program manager for a company called Techie. It is the world's first, first automated web series on coding. Coding. Everybody know what coding is? Yash, tell us. What is coding? All and by right, the way, welcome. Uh, I'm sorry. <laughs> yeah. Welcome to the Make the Great Podcast. Thank you for coming on. Thank you for sharing some information with us. Let's start with us. Uh, coding. What is it? Why is it important? Why should it matter to people? Right. Thank you for inviting me, Stephen. Um, that is a great question. What is coding and why is it important? Let me get started with why coding is important now. Um, you know, we all know that there are these things called computer languages, these languages that only computers speak. You know, one of those languages was what your father used, which is Fortran, way back in the day, right? And um, I mean, Fortran is one of those languages. You, people may have heard about Python and Java, and you know, you always listen to these things. You're like, well, do I ever really have any need to learn these things? Um, for a good portion of uh, our history with technology, the answer was that no, you didn't really need to learn computer languages in order to be, uh, you know, industry ready, in order to be able to work in the industry. But uh, in the past 10 to 20 years, technology has changed at such a rapid pace, uh, at a rapid pace that everyone from organizations, nonprofits, governments have realized that making coding accessible to children is more and more important than any other subject that's out there uh, in academics. Uh, primarily because how important it has become, not just for engineers or scientists to know how to code, but also people just in general, working at banks, people working in the software world, everything has become digitized. And so if you want to work in this digital economy, you've got to be able to code, you've got to know the language that technology speaks, and that's what programming essentially is. Well, I think of coding and programming, I think of writing a series of commands or whatever that would tell, basically tell a computer, or I guess an app or something what to do, right? That's right, that's and, right. Uh, so, you know, I, I, I'm, this, is, this will date me, but if then statements, <laughs> you know, I, I mean, uh, so you're talking you know, about you're a dinosaur metals. here, but uh, here's the beauty of it is it has so many applications, right? I mean, coding is, I mean, there's computers every place. I mean, we're carrying computers around our pockets all day. Basically, it's what a cell phone is. Uh, all the banking's on computing. All, pretty much everybody's school is computer-based now, and that's my thing, academics. Um, it, it, so here, here's a statistic you, you provided me with. 
by 2030, which is only seven or eight years here, right? 85% of jobs that will exist have not been invented yet. That's right. I mean, that's a lot. That's a, that's a, that's, that's five out of six, right? Uh, their AI, artificial intelligence, automation, uh, changing the way everybody is going to work, collect information, because we are clearly in an information age, right? Information right. is king. Well, maybe cash is king is what they used to say or still say, but information, analyzing information, companies just spend tons of money just to get information about their potential clients. And they got all these systems to analyze it. Colleges have whole majors in um, data analysis, information management, things that really are, are pretty new, co comparatively speaking. Um, I don't think there's any going back, but where do you see this? Where, where do you see the people? How do people prepare now? Let's say yeah. you're 14. Okay. Yeah. I, I got a parent who's listening. I got a 14 year old, 23rd, they're going to be 22, right? 23. They're going to be coming out of college, which is theoretically when you're going to try to be getting a job. How do they prepare? What's, what's, what's your advice? I mean, really uh, kids nowadays have a much bigger responsibility than arguably kids in almost any generation that have lived in the past. Um, to give you some perspective about how radically different kids are going to be living in this world. Um, a typical child who's like, say, nine or 10 years old today will most likely never have the need to get a driver's license. Even if they do get a driver's license, it wouldn't necessarily be extremely necessary, important for them to get it because they're going to be living in a world where automated cars, self-driving cars are going to be the norm. Mm. Um, and this isn't something that's way into the future. I mean, we have cyber trucks already that are you know, traveling uh, across America. You have companies like Google that are investing heavily in self-driven trucks right you have the driver's responsibility is just to really make sure that the, the car is just running they, they don't have their hands on the steering wheel at all um and this is true in many cases uh, so when you talk about that statistic which is that 85 percent of the jobs in 2030 have not been invented you can really see that happening around you and it's very evident. I mean, I'll give you another very day-to-day -day example. If you've gone to McDonald's recently, you probably used a kiosk out there. That wasn't the case uh, 10 years ago. Oh, you mean to like, order the food, right? Yeah, if you're trying to order food, you're probably going to order it on a kiosk at McDonald's now. And that's mm -hmm. becoming true for Walmart. That's becoming true for more and more retail stores and um, you know, slowly you'll see that retail jobs will end up becoming automated entirely. Mm. You have Amazon doing something similar with shopping uh, stores as well. So re what really happens here is the way we perceive the world changes because just society is automating away certain functions that no people normally did before. This is why kids who are maybe say 14 years old today are going to be living in a world where they're just going to see such rapid change. And so for them to be on top of all of this, it's not just a regular high school GED or a college education that's just going to get them through. If they're trying to stay on top of things and if they're trying to keep themselves industry ready so that once they're out of college or out of school, they can get a job, they're going to be needing to equip with themselves with these skills such as coding, such as artificial intelligence, so that they don't really, you know, they, so that they don't have to suck later on. They don't have to stay, they don't feel stay back later yeah. on. So, yeah. The closest I've come to what you're talking about is I've, I go to the store and you can just check yourself out, right? They have an, they have an aisle where you just take whatever you're buying and you put the, um, that's whatever that scan code is called. That's right. Yeah. And you just, you know, you put it in front of the reader. So instead of the cashier doing it, you're doing it yourself. I guess I perceive that as a convenience because I don't have to worry about the other person. You, or you get that little portable gun thing that you shoot at it. Mm -hmm. Can you give two, one or two specific examples uh, of a job that hasn't been invented yet? I mean, because there's already programmers, right? I mean, there's already people coding. You're right. suggesting that's just going to expand into more and more and more and more uh, uh, verticals. But right. it, it, is there a specific t uh, role or task that, that might be created? Um, hmm. Okay, that's a good question. I mean, there, uh, there's a lot of, 
lot of guesses in going around in the industry. There's a whole industry called the future of work that's dedicated mm. to just solving this problem, which is that what are the jobs in the future going to look like? Um, to give you an example of or maybe two examples that I could give you in 2030, jobs that may exist then that do not exist now. Yeah. Uh, look at how fast space exploration is going out. You know, like mm. you have companies like SpaceX literally landing rockets that, you know, well, one, that once the rockets that once go up, they come down and they're reusing them. Uh, by 2030, we're expecting to be really deep in the entire Mars process, like a, a landing in Mars, a landing in, on the moon, setting up a colony there. Like that conversation is about to be extremely strong in 2030. So you can imagine that uh, jobs that involve, uh, you know, people becoming space colonizers, just people becoming uh, just, uh, you know, a whole different bunch of roles in terms of, uh, you know, uh, space exploration might show up that, you know, kids nowadays can prepare for for in 2030. Mm. Oh. Uh, another example that I could give you is blockchain technology. Uh, I mean, you've heard about Bitcoin probably, you've heard about all these like cryptocurrencies, right? Mm -hmm. They're run by this technology called blockchain that makes it so special. Now, blockchain is fairly untested. Blockchain is considered to be something as what the internet was to the world in, back in the 90s. That's what the amount of impact blockchain is supposedly going to have on our world as well. So you're looking at people becoming blockchain programmers, people, so, you know, getting, uh, you know, people getting, uh, like public voting systems are now going to be changing because of blockchain. There's so many use cases within the blockchain technology that that are now being coming out. Like, I don't know if you've heard about these things called NFTs, non-fungible tokens. These are like a huge thing that came out last year. And it's essentially just these, uh, uh, these art pieces that are created on the blockchain technology being sold for 70,000, 80,000, sometimes in millions of dollars a piece. Um, so you have a wide range of jobs that are coming in and you can see their traces, uh, like their early traces nowadays uh, as we're you know, looking at the world of technology. Oh, so these are all things that maybe even two, three, certainly 10, 20 years ago would have be considered almost science fiction. Uh, or certainly uh, uh, futuristic, right? That's that's a word they threw around in the 70s and 80s. Futurists, you know, they would predict things that seemed fantastic, and and but but actually have happened. Um, uh, let, let, let's kind of bring this back around. By the way, we are the Make the Great Podcast. I'm Dr. Stephen Green. My guest is Yash Singh. and uh, he is uh, basically trying to spread the word that kids, people. Maybe even me, <laughs> learn how to code. <laughs> it's out there. It's not going away. It's certainly not pulling back, right? It's only going to get bigger, bigger, bigger. Um, there's a gazillion ways it's going to be applied. Tell us about what you do specifically. So you have a, a circumstance. I don't, know, I don't know what you call it, a class, a course, a workshop. You have a, an ability for kids to plug in to what you're doing and learn how to code in kind of a fun sort of game, gamified-ish way, right? That's so let's right, let's talk right. about that. So this is this is is your company, Techie. Um, so so how would this work? So I'm a parent. I say, you know what, Steve is making sense. Yash, you got me. Uh, what do I do? How do I uh, not get my kid instead of going out? Maybe not instead of maybe instead of going playing baseball, or maybe instead of getting on the computer and playing games all day. Maybe they spend an hour learning how to code. Um, what would they do? Um, well, uh, if someone is. Uh, interested in knowing what coding is, I would really, first of all, recommend them checking out all the free resources that they can on the internet. Like right now, we're living in a very democratized uh, internet where you have access to pretty much anything. If you want to learn something, you're going to get free access to it. And so I don't want to say that, you know, what Techie does is going to solve this entire problem. No, you can, as a parent, you can take this call yourself. You can get educated on yourself on the internet and take steps forward. Uh, what Techie does is that we provide mentorship to kids. Uh, what we've realized is that there are resources available online to get you to learn to code, uh, you know, without any cost. But the problem with that is the same thing happened. The problem with that is that kids are left with 
studying a new subject without the guidance of any quality expert mentor. I mean, think about it, Steve. You teach kids as well, right? Like, if you mm -hmm. really wanted to teach someone history, you could just give them a history textbook and be like, here you go. Just go ahead and enjoy it. You know, it's free. Uh, learn history, come back. But no one's going to understand uh, the, you know, the seriousness of what they, the things that they're studying unless someone guides them through it. Mm -hmm. That's really where techie comes in. Uh, we're the world's first animated web series on coding. So what we do is that we have an entire animated web series that uh, that is essentially shown the kids. It's a part of our course. Uh, and our course is meant for beginners who are just getting started with programming, who have zero to minimal experience with programming. And um, you know, if they're trying to learn uh, in an affordable and in a engaging way, that's where techie comes in. Because uh, another thing that you'll see with coding programs is that they're mighty expensive. Uh, a typical coding tutor would charge approximately $40 an hour in order to tutor your child, which is you know, a substantial amount. Uh, at Techie, we only do $17 an hour. Uh, you know, the, our goal is to make this, make access to export instructors easy uh, and be able to really communicate uh, Python programming to children in the most effective way possible. So, uh, okay, so we, let's, let's sort of scenario this. You get a completely novice beginner person. They right. join in with Techie. They get access to your uh, resources. They get a mentor slash instructor. And, and by the way, what you're saying is very true. Listen, one of the things that keeps me in business is the fact a lot of people struggle with subjects like math and science. Um, one of my roles is just to literally teach, hey, here's how you do this. Here's how you do this. But what I've always prided myself on is being able to make the connections into other things to integrate what we're learning into larger pictures, what came before, what comes after, right. uh, as opposed to teaching to the test. It's a big debate in education. Um, how long is the program or how long could somebody stay in it? A and B, what, a graduate, of, is there, if there is such a thing, a techie graduate, would they yeah. be like a master programmer? Would they be a, a good programmer? Would they be able to go out and, I don't know, code a, 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 a program? I'm, what, what, yeah. What's kind of the end game here? And I'm sure the you're probably game. adding to this all the time. but Oh, yeah, of course. I mean, and that's a great question. Uh, you know, what is really the end game? What's going to happen once I enroll my child in something like that? Um, Techie has this entire student journey planned out. So this journey has been designed for the child of today to be able to become industry ready at the end of the whole experience. Um, you know, so if you had to basically say, rate someone from a zero to 10, with a zero being having no experience with programming to a 10 being I am a master programmer and I know everything programming. Um, through our first course, we essentially hope to get our kids up to a six. Uh, you know, a six is a respectable number where we believe that, you know, they are now not only comfortable with programming, but if they were to pursue this in the future, this would have become their, like a much advanced topic for them, they would still not be scared about it. You know, we uh, essentially we have taken them out of their comfort zone and made programming their new comfort zone. Uh, that's what the hope is for the first course. But for the entire techie journey that we planned out, the goal is to be able to bring these kids to a 10 or at least close to a 10 by the time they are done with high school and they're going out in college. The first the first course is just getting them to a six, which is a Python programming course. Yeah. But uh, we have- Python is the language. Python is the language, okay. yes. But for us, non, us non-techies. <laughs> No, no, I, it's you, like a, I think of Python, I think of a snake, but you're talking in terms like this is like C plus <laughs> or basic right. or yeah, you, you've got to get to my level here a little bit. Um, I got you. On, on the scope of the whole world of programming, is Python a very commonly used program? Is it a niche program? I assume it's out there. I, I don't know what, what the most commonly used uh, software development programs are so basically if somebody stays the course over some number of weeks months or years they can go from absolute beginner to very experienced strong uh independently independent programmer through That's your right. program 
in, in, in not true. like 20 years in like two three years oh no no not at all it's not 20 years at all no no yeah. uh, so there's, there's even hope for months. people like me <laughs> <laughs> no within months you should be able to uh be in a very confident position and uh, and so then, okay let, let, let's flip the switch let's flip it a little bit so now i i put my kid in this they've done this a year let's just say what could they actually program like an app a game uh, 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 I don't know. I, I mean, what, what kind of product, cause ultimately it's sort of product development based somewhere. Right? Uh, right. Or at least support. So what, what could somebody, I'll use the word program, but I guess create, um, yeah. could, could they make an app? Could they make a game? Could they make, or all of the above? Uh, could so, they make a, I don't know, like a, a, a recipe wrap. I, I don't trying to put this into sort of a results based context. I got you, I got you. So at the end of the first course, within a few months, if uh, your child is a part of this course, they will be able to do programming at the level of what uh, sophomores in college are able to do. Mm. So if you're taking a, if you're a, if you're someone taking an undergraduate degree in computer science, which is something that I did, okay. uh, at the level at which you reach at the end of your freshman year, entering the sophomore year, is what your child will be at the end. So of one year of program. like college level computer programming That's is equal right. to phase one of techie. That's right. And okay, here's why wow. I'm, I'm saying well, that's, that. That's pretty impressive. Yeah. And I mean, and here's why I'm saying that because um, a lot of your question was whether your child is going to be able to make apps or games. Well, I'm, I mean, let me, let me rephrase it. It's, right. it's like, one thing to have the skill set. Okay, now I know how to program. The other side of it is what do I do with it, right? That's right. Because look, I tutor math all day. Well, not all day, but a lot. And you know what the most common question I get from people that don't like math is? What? <laughs> no, the most common question is, when am I ever going to use this? Yeah, that's right. Uh, you know, we're that's doing right. calculus, we're doing algebra, we're graphing stuff, we're solving stuff. We got seven lines of, I won't call it code, algebra written down. And when am I ever going to use this in my life? This is dumb. And what am I supposed to say? You may not, if you're not going to be a mathematician or an accountant or a, something that's math centered as a career. But the, right. the larger pushback, or I shouldn't say that, the larger explanation is I say, listen, yeah, she may not like math, but it's important to know how to think. Math is, a, is almost like a language, right? It has its rules, kind of its own grammar, so to speak. But what it really does is teach people to think in a logical, progressive way. You got to think ahead. You got to look a few steps ahead, a little bit like chess almost, in a sense. And it's very rule-based. You can't make up your own rules in math. I imagine in programs, same thing. I can't just say the exact same thing. What you right. just I, said. I, right. I don't want exactly this. I, I want this to work this way, but it's too bad. I, you got to follow the rules or the constructs, or I, I don't know what the exact uh, vernacular is in programming. The um, oh, I commands. Mean, I'm telling you. I'm telling you, you exactly what you just said for math is what we say for programming because math and programming are both logic based uh, subjects. Mm -hmm. Uh, so I'm maybe, maybe, you. maybe I'd be good at it. I was always good at math. Maybe I, <laughs> you can maybe be a career. <laughs> 2032, I'll be out at 110, but maybe, you know, who knows what, uh, what, what that might open up for me. Um, oh, the, uh, okay. So yeah. So small, pic well, I shouldn't say small picture on the detail level, you're teaching kids in what we're going to say is kind of the fun, interactive way to basically become pretty advanced programmers in a matter of months. Mm -hmm by the scale of what they might pay, I don't know, 10, 20, $50,000 a year to go to a college for a year, right? Then they progress into level two, level three, so on and so on. Um, presumably the ones that want to keep going are going to have a big interest in it. And this may become a hobby, maybe in a career. Um, what, uh, what, what do you think is, I'm going to think I want to ask this question. So we're programming in Python, right? Now, if somebody, there's obviously other programming languages out there, right? If somebody's competent or, or masterful in Python, does that enable them to migrate and program in other languages as well? Does it matter? Like you have to be really good at a lot of them or can you only be really good at one? When I, and when I say them, I mean languages. I got you, I got you. No, if you're doing programming in Python and if you decide to shift into other languages, it, the transition is absolutely smooth. Okay. Um, and this is, I'm saying this from personal experience because I started programming with a completely different language called Java. 
that's what they taught me in freshman year at UT Arlington. Okay. Um, and uh, later on, the next year, I had a transition to C, and it was just easy. And here's why I'll tell you that. Um, you're, you, do you only speak English, uh, Stephen? Or do you well, have <laughs> uh, yeah, fluency, yeah. Yeah, fluency right, right. like if I speak English, I can't go and learn Russian in two days or Hindi or whatever, you know, right. or, or Spanish to, for that matter. That's right, that's right. But if you were to talk to someone who's bilingual or trilingual, and if you were to mm-hmm. ask them that, hey, what language do you think in? Uh, they'd probably be like, well, well, I think in my mother tongue, but it's probably different in different scenarios. If I'm at work, right, I think right. in English. If I'm at home, I think in Spanish. Hmm. Um, but, and if they're trying to write it down, say I'm trying to write, uh, how are you in Spanish, right? Hmm. I'm going to be able to, if I, and if I'm not a native Spanish speaker, I can still think of the words, how are you in English, and then translate that into Spanish. It's kind of similar with programming. So you where, sort of think in the language you learned first, yeah. your so-called native programming language, then you can sort of translate it. If you have the fundamentals clear, which is what you just said, right? The if-then mm. statements, that's a fundamental. If-then statements are the same in Python and in Java. The only difference is maybe the words that they use there. Mm. That's okay. all. The concept's right. the same. So that's, you know, it's really not that hard to transition. Python is okay. considered... I, 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 listen, I believe you, man. I believe you. <laughs> no, it, it's... Uh, but no, it's really true, though, because um, I've been in places... I, I was on a vacation one time at, at this resort. And there was a guy who just amazed me. He got him. He was like the head of like of activities, right? So there's all these people standing around a pool. He gave the same instructions in four languages back to back. So he said it first in Spanish because I, th- I was in Mexico. I think he says, you know, blah, 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 blah. um, yeah. uh, how do you say, Mujeres, uh, uh, Mujeres is women, right? It's like uh, and and uh, blah, 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 blah. he says the whole thing in Spanish. Then he says it in French. Then he says it in Russian because there was a lot of Russians in this resort. Then he says oh, wow. it in English, just back to back to back. And uh, I just was like, wow, like, uh, you know, I, it's like, and he's like talking to one person in English, turn to he's like three conversations in three languages with people. Fascinating. Yeah. So, uh, all right, let, let, let's kind of start to wrap this up a little bit, at least for today. I know we could take, so somebody wants to learn about techie. Somebody says, wow, this is cool. I want my kid to check this out. It's summer's coming up. Maybe this is a great summer project. This is somebody, something somebody would do independently. They would log in, I guess, to a website or something, and uh, they'd have an account, and then they would kind of self-direct this, correct? Yes, you can. I mean, they can so how would the somebody, I'm a parent, I'm a parent, I'm ready to go. How do, how do, I, uh, how do, I, how do I get to this? Do they need to reach out to you? Well, they can reach out to me. I'm always open to talk to people on LinkedIn. I connect with Stephen on LinkedIn. So I'm always that open. is true. That is true. And um, I mean, apart from that, you can go on our website, which is www.techie.us. Techie, Techie is, is T-E-K-I-E. T-E-K-I-E, that's right, dot .us. Okay. And uh, if not that, you can, I mean, uh, you can look me up on LinkedIn and we can connect there as well. But if you go to the website, you should be able to book a free class, which is the first session. We're actually coming out with a new program where we're doing the first month of programming for free. Mm. So, we're, so because we're, you know, trying to get this the word out there and trying to get people to sign up. Uh, and get access to really our animated web series and our. I, 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 I got to tell you, I may do it myself. I think this would be kind yeah. of a cool challenge for. Well, I may be. I may. <laughs> I may. You could. I may be. Uh, you know, five, it's only for ten uh, to seventeen. I mean, you year could old. take five other your kids and add their age together. It might not hit mine, but <laughs> <laughs> I guess it doesn't matter. Um, interesting. Uh, so techie yeah. www dot dot us. Check it out. Get your free lesson. Get your free trial. Anybody wants to reach out to the man himself, uh, I will get you his contact information in the show notes and all. Um, uh, anything else you just want to throw out there? I mean, uh, you know, here's your goal, right? The goal is you're trying to make coding easy for people to learn, partly because it, it, it's just there. You're able to do it. And imagine there's a lot of coding in the program to teach people coding, right? There's a sort of irony there. Um, But also because just the sheer realities, this is where the world appears to be going, maybe super, super quickly, maybe not as quickly, depending on who you want to talk to. 
but but it's happening. Oh, look who's here. The cat's here. Um, and I think it's interesting. It is, um, is there any reason? I mean, let me just be devil's advocate for a second. Is there any reason somebody say, well, you know, uh, I'd rather learn a different program or, or you think Python is the, uh, I mean, there's probably a reason you picked Python for your platform. Um, okay. Um, all right. So listen, this is the Make the Great podcast. Yash Singh, halfway around the world. This is the cool thing about technology, but this is, this is exactly a case in point. I'm here in Philadelphia. He's in, I'm not even sure the name of the city you're in. in India. I'm in Mumbai right now. Where's it called? Mumbai. Oh, Mumbai. That's a big city. Yeah. yeah. Mumbai. Okay. How many people live there? Millions. Oh, yeah. 20 million. 20 million. Dang. Right That's a lot the, of people, folks. So he's, but this is, this is, look, this is where it's going, right? We're talking to each other. There's obviously software supporting this or software supporting you listening to this podcast. You want to be on the provider side of this. You don't want to be left behind. You don't want to be, you know, at a point where you just can't keep up with the tech because you didn't get the proper thing. So instead of going to college for three, four years to learn programming or whatever, do it, do it when it's fun, learn it when you got time and try it out. I think I'm going to do it. I really am. Why not? Um, my free time. Yeah. Uh, Yash, anything else you want to share with us? I mean, you're a busy guy, right? But um, uh, you got any other things you like to do? I mean, it's, it's uh, you know, I mean, you, you like, I don't know, cricket? What are they? Don't they like cricket? Isn't yeah. cricket big in India? It's huge here. I'm, I'm huge about cricket myself. I'm glad That's you right. I, I don't want to stereotype, <laughs> but I don't, I don't know if they even have a cricket field in America. They must uh, somewhere. Uh, Cricket's a cricket's the sport. It is the sport. So you're not stereotyping at all. I don't really <laughs> understand it. I, I watched, it was on the TV the other day and I really didn't even understand what happened. <laughs> like a play happened. Everybody was cheering and going nuts. If you've got, you got a Netflix, you should go to this thing called Simply Explained. I think they have a 15 minute episode on how, mm -hmm. you know, what cricket is and they explain okay. it. So you should probably check that out. Okay. Really nice. I know the wicket. I know wicket. There you go. <laughs> do you actually play cricket? Do you got one of those paddles on yeah. that? Okay. Uh, I do. Yeah. I used to play cricket a lot in high school. Uh, and then I went to America and I got introduced to American culture and football and, mm -hmm. and never got never got to play cricket there. But yeah, it's I really think fun. cricket is a little less violent than American football, maybe. <laughs> um, not, not that that's good or bad, just is. Um, you got a favorite food or something? I mean, uh, I like to just get a little human interest here. What What do you? Uh, assume you eat Indian oh. food, but. Uh, well, no, it is. I mean, Indian food is regular food to me now. <laughs> but, uh, right. Well, I would think right. I mean, do they I have enjoy... like uh, McDonald's in India? Oh yeah, McDonald's is huge. But the people eat it, I mean, because it, it's yeah. uh, most Indians are vegetarian, right? They have vegetarian McDonald's. <laughs> they, I mean, really? they have an insane number of vegetarian options at the McDonald's here. And in fact, I would argue that the Indian McDonald's has better quality than American McDonald's because I've had the chance to taste both of them. Hmm. And uh, yeah, and McDonald's internationally performs a lot better quality wise than it does in America. Very interesting. Well, I mean, uh, most people are not going to tell you McDonald's food in America is the top of the scale of quality. <laughs> Um, and this is not about bashing or pushing McDonald's. I'm just, it's the, it's the way the culture no, is, right? So they have vegetarian McDonald's. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. And they're really good. A lot of people really go to McDonald's for the vegetarian burgers. So, yeah. Really? Hmm. Yeah. I'll wow. send you a menu. Uh, well, if I ever make it to Mumbai, we, you and I will have to go to the McDonald's and have a uh, curry veggie yeah, burger. It's called, it's called a wedge of Maharaja burger. Uh, a wedge of Maharaja have. burger. You have to send me a picture yeah. of that next time you get one. Send me a picture. I got you. I got you. <laughs> a Maharaja burger. Interesting. See, look at the things you learn here. I, I, I did not know any of this. All right. Listen, uh, Sing, Yash Singh, thanks again. I hope everybody tries this out. Um, you get a, you get a free trial. You, you, you never know. You know, this may this may change your career. First month's free. The first month's free. So for okay. kids, if, you're, if you have a kid between the age of eight to seventeen, first month's absolutely free. So you know, there's really no cost for signing up. What if you got a, a 22 year old kid? Oh well, they got. They, they have other options for them. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> you got a window, but still. But you know, look, yeah. you learn young, you get interested. Maybe this is something to go from a hobby to a big interest to a career. And as we have uh, tried to argue the case in eight, 10 years, 
might be predominant anyway. All right, we are going to wrap it up in a second. Studio audience showing their love for Yash. Thank you. Appreciate it. Thank, Thank you very you. much. Uh, hey, if you liked what you heard today, please subscribe to the podcast. I'm coming up on a thousand subscribers. I don't, you can't even track exactly who it is, but if I know who the thousand subscriber is, you're going to get a free make the great gift pack. Yeah. Which is worth like 40 cents, but, but it's, it's really, really good. And then you can't buy it. You can only be given it. So uh, we are here uh, supplementally. Uh, a lot of stuff going on right now in the Make the Great World. I'll, I'll probably talk about that more in the live streams. So check that out. Uh, today, it was all about coding, why it's important. But really more importantly, the simplicity of learning it when you get with the right system, the right people, uh, take you from zero to a million in a couple of years, and then you're ready for everything. And uh, who knows? Who knows what that can be? Maybe you write the next great app. And uh, you can retire your parents. I got to get my uh, <laughs> get my kids working on this. So, uh, yeah, thanks again. We will talk again. There's way more we could talk about. Maybe we'll bring you back in, uh, you know, a month or two, and, and you maybe you can get into some examples that. and some case studies. I think that would be interesting. All right, we are going to wrap it up here. I will see everybody next time. Steve Green, the Make the Grade podcast. Have a great week, and remember, it's all about taking action. Taking action to maximize your education, and so long. You've been listening to Make the Grade with the success doctor, Stephen Green. If you enjoyed this episode, be sure to subscribe. For more resources and support, please visit makethegrade.net.